At the end of the lesson, you are expected to formulate support vector regression problems, distinguish one-dimensional support vector regression from multidimensional support vector regression, and appreciate the use of support vector regression in machine learning. Today, we are going to discuss about the geometrical perspectives of support vector regression because support vector regression can be best explained if we can properly and intuitively understand the graphical representation and the geometrical perspective of this algorithm. So before we continue, please don't forget to click the subscribe button down there because we do have a lot of free and exciting data science lessons for all of you. We do have mastering machine learning algorithm, deep learning mathematics, the different data science algorithms, and a lot more. Don't forget to click the notification bell so that you will be notified every time we have a new session. And please don't forget to click all. And also give this video a thumbs up and share this with your friends. So we have two geometrical perspectives that we're going to talk about today. So these are the one-dimensional perspective. And the second one is the multidimensional perspective. So the question is, how are we going to deal each one of them? So the formulation of our support vector regression problem may depend on how many features a certain problem has. So by the word itself, one-dimensional has only one. And multidimensional, of course, it contains two or more. And this presentation would be best understood if you already have studied our playlist which is entitled Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm because that really provides the foundation of the algorithms that we are talking about in our channel. So a one-dimensional perspective is described by this mathematical formula and we have here y is equal to the function of x which is equal to w x plus b which is equal to the summation of m w j x j plus b of course we already knew that w here is the number of parameters that we have and b here is the drift or the intercept which gives us the direction of our trend but of course in support vector regression b here can be either minus or plus which means this part here can be plus b and this part here can be minus b so which means that they refer to the upper and the lower hyperplane we have for our tube so as we go along with our discussions we will be able to understand what i'm talking so as of the moment we will just have the one dimensional and the multi-dimensional so that in our future videos we will be able to understand properly what i'm talking here so it's always better to learn by chunk so we can properly understand the process flow of ideas of this algorithm the basic idea about support vector regression that we must not forget is the fact that in this algorithm we always try to fit let me write here fit the error within a certain threshold so there is certain boundaries that we have to consider wherein which our error must fit within this region say for example only the errors that can be found from this point going to this point and from this point going to this point can be considered for our regression so in support vector regression which we already had mentioned in our last lesson this is actually our regression line reg line okay so if we are going to think of the simple linear regression wherein we try to minimize the error, in this case we are trying to fit as many errors as possible within our certain threshold. So because we are trying to fit as many errors as possible, this means that we are formulating a certain approximation function within the narrowest tube that we can find as much as possible and while we are approximating the function in this tube here well, of course we are also trying to minimize the prediction error so as you can see here in our presentation we could see here three lines the upper the middle and of course we do have one at the lower this one as what we've said is our regression line which gives us the predictive value 
and these ones here are the hyperplanes which are being shaped by the support vectors say for example these points are what we call the support vectors so when we say support vectors these are the different data points within these certain threshold that can be considered for our prediction so with that from this point as far as these points are concerned we are getting the approximation function this approximation function also produces an objective function so we have here the case of w which is the magnitude of the normal vector to the surface that is being approximated and to get this approximation of this function we use this one so as of the moment i believe that it's still not very clear to you but then again as we go through the process of our discussion we would be able to properly understand all of this okay this time let's go to multidimensional perspective of support vector regression so in this case we are using matrix notation and maybe you would like to ask me why is it that we are using here the matrix notation as discussed in our mastering machine learning algorithm it is always better to use matrix notation if we are considering a lot of features because this can minimize our space and also save our time in formulating our problem so this mathematical presentation gives us the perspective of multidimensional support vector regression problem and this is how we formulate a problem if we do have a lot of features to consider and what is this all about so as you could see in here we augment x by one and we include b in the matrix of w and using this actually gives us a multivariate regression and when we do the process this becomes w transpose x plus b and of course the same situation or scenario we discuss in here as far as the upper and the lower ones are concerned and an m in here these are actually the dimension that we have so because we only have one dimension in this case we don't have any plus one in here so in this case because we do have a lot of dimensions then we're going to do the plus one or as many feature we have in our data set so what's going on in here let me add to m plus one this one also approximates the polynomial function that we use in our model so there are actually a lot of things going on if we are talking about multidimensional the first thing is that when we think of a lot of w so that means when we increase the number of w in our data and when the values of w are non-zero let me write here non-zero then what the result would be that there will always be a higher order solutions so when you ask me about what a higher order solution means it means that we have to think of polynomials so with respect to this case let's look at this one so as you could see we have a lot of data points and when we plot our data points it forms a shape like this so if we are going to use the first order polynomial that means our shape can be like this the shape of our line so when we use the one dimensional perspective in the multi-dimensional perspective the tendency is that our model is susceptible to underfitting why underfitting it's because it cannot describe our data set properly so as you could see the data points are from here then then it goes to this point so using the zero order polynomial solution there will always be a very large error in our prediction because the deviation from the desired output would be very much big and I believe we don't want that to happen. We always would like something that really defines the trend of our data. And if we're going to use this kind of model for the data that is not yet seen by our model, then as what I've said, it cannot give us the proper prediction. What would be the thing that we are going to do? Of course, we're going to increase the number of our parameters W in this case. So are we going to use only one that means we will have the first order polynomial so do you think it would 
give us justice. I don't think it can, thinking that we have a lot of data points to consider and it uses a lot of parameters. Now the question is this, what is it that can give us the best fit? It must be something that can give us the best trade-off, which means it can properly describe the trend by producing the best trade-off between the function, the function of flatness and our prediction error. So that means if we're going to draw a line, it must be something like this, okay? So with this kind of line, we can say that it's the best fit because it may give us the proper prediction without underfitting and overfitting. But you have to be careful in adding a lot of parameters because the more you add complexity to your polynomial would mean overfitting. And that is why it's always very important to test different combinations of different parameters. And so with that case, it's always very important to consider your feature engineering before you're going to choose which parameters you have to use for your modeling. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? Basically, we always deal with data science problems with a lot of features to consider. Knowing the support vector regression problem formulation, we will be able to understand how to deal with the problem so as to avoid overfitting and underfitting. After all being said and done, let's try this. How is support vector regression problem formulated? What is the impact of using parameters? How should it be dealt with? Please write your answers in the comment down below so that we would be able to learn from each other and we would have a very great interaction of ideas. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. You can enjoy our data science courses for free like Mastering Machine Learning Algorithm, Deep Learning Mathematics, the different data science algorithms, and many more. Here, you can always learn and upskill for free.